All right, good afternoon, folks. My name is Ryan Lepp, and I'm the with Case IH, and I'm the Combine Product Specialist for the area. And today we're going to talk about some of the productivity tips, uh, things to help you think about before harvest, uh, some of the settings. We we'll go through some of that, and just some of the things to look at. And so what we're going to do is do a kind of a, a combine walk around, and we are going to talk to start here at the feeder house. And uh, things to look for here on the feeder house is look at the front drum and you know what height should I run this at and that is adjustable again there is three different heights you can adjust it and that's done with this bolt right here so what you do is you loosen this jam nut up and then you can turn that bolt in turn that turns a rectangular block on the inside where the drum arm rests on so when you turn this bolt it turns the block and that changes the height of the feeder drum and there's one on each side of the feeder house so one here and another one on the other side and you see here there's a hole right here so with that hole being exposed you can see meaning you can see through it if you can see through it that tells you that feeder drum is in the highest position so being that if you have a header on and you want to know obviously you can't see the feeder drum very well so you can look through this peephole and with it being open like that exposed you can see through it that tells you that the feeder drum is in the highest position so why do we want the feeder uh, position why is that important in corn you want to run it in the high position and the reason is in high yielding corn especially you don't want to pinch this area off you want to make sure that the feeder drum is as high as it can go and allowing crop flow now if you have an auger head um, sometimes with an auger head you it, it can have a tendency to not feed as well then I would lower this drum down and that's going to be a lot more aggressive in feeding and pulling the crop in and if you have a draper head which most of the time everybody does have a draper head on these combines uh, I would have make sure that the feeder drum is in the highest position and on a draper head since you have a feed belt that's feeding into the feeder house it's not so much as important to be so aggressive you just want to make sure you have enough clearance underneath the feeder drum so that's why in beans with a draper head you can leave it in the upper most highest position and then just leave it in there for corn as well um, as far as feeder chain adjustment right here Again, in 2018, we went to a cast iron slat, uh, is what you see right here. Uh, this guy right here. So that that chain adjustment, um, what I would do is look for to make sure that this gauge you have a uh, a strap metal right here. You want to make sure that it is flush with the inside of that washer right there, and it's one on each side of the feeder house. This is. This is a 250 series combine and it's got the heavier duty spring for the feeder tension and that makes a big difference in holding that tension throughout the season so but basically a daily check here is just to make sure that this is, is flush with the inside of the washer and this is the same concept as well on the 240 and 230 series combines as well which are the flagship um, now again looking at some other things to check we want to let's say now we're ready to go harvest we want to hook the header up so what we want to do is make sure that we get this latched there's a pin underneath on the header side that this has to go over center and make sure that is latched there's a going to be a bracket here that you attach to this bar and if you can't get to it you may have to loosen these three bolts up and then slide uh, the pin or slide this bracket over the pin and then in turn that's going to adjust this handle as well when you do that and get it so that you can latch it as well as make sure it's latched on the bottom as well as the top right here and then tighten these bolts back up so that's the header latch so once you get that latched on then you can hook up the electrical right here and make sure when you plug this into the header that it's that these little tabs are going to be lined up with on the connector on the head side so basically push it in straight um, and then turn the collar to tighten it up when you plug this guy in it's going to make the combine talk to the header there's a header recognition sensor on the header that tells the electronics on the combine to know what header it is so that's after you plug this guy in and we'll go through that in a moment on 
checking and make sure you got the he right header selected in the monitor. The other thing here is just make sure that the hydraulic, when that's connected, you know, just make sure that these are all cleaned off and there's no dirt and stuff on there. So just make sure that's cleaned off and then you plug it into the header. There's an again over center latch that latches around these pins and that makes it tight there. So, so just be aware of that. Um, on the, as you can see on this 250 series combine, you've got the feeder fore aft and that way I can change my header angle going through the field automatically from the cab. And this lever right here, you might ask, well, what's this lever do right here? This is kind of a safety feature. And if you're working on the head, you want to make sure that, it's, that it is actually cranked like that in that position. And that stops the oil flow to these two cylinders, this one here and then one on the other side. And then you can work on the header. It's kind of a safety feature. But when you get back to working, make sure you flip it back so that allow oil flow to the cylinders. Um, as far as the safety goes here, we, we have a safety latch right here. And if I wanted to work on the header, I'm gonna put that down. Obviously we have the header down, or the feeder down right now, so we don't have this, it won't slip over the, the uh, cylinder like it should. When we raise it up, then it will. Um, so that's what I, re if I would do, is put this down, go up in the cab, raise the header up, this will fall down, and then you've got you reduce the, the risk of the feeder selling down. That's any time you're working on the headers, make sure that this safety stand is down. Um, and then raise it back up when you are done working on the header and ready to go combine. So this this guy right here, this is your rock trap. This guy right here is an over center latch, but basically if you lower it down, that empties the rock trap. Uh, do, good idea to do this every morning, just get all that, any, if there's any rocks or anything like that in there, uh, drop that out. It's gonna need it. And then when you get ready back into harvest, put it back. Make sure you, you put it back into the operating position. So some of the other main points here on the feeder house. There's not a lot to check here. Obviously, we have the the lower gear case on this particular model. This since it's painted black, it's the heavy duty gear case which is designed for the 16 and 18 row headers that are chopping so it provides a lot more cooling capacity the standard drive is going to be painted red and that's you know 12 row 30 inch chopping heads is designed for that obviously we we do have make sure that uh, if you have an older head you put on a new combine this shaft right here is for the thousand so it's a 21 tooth spline shaft if you have an older head older than 2017 then you will need the 540 shaft or, you need, or you'll need the adapter to do it. You can adapt, make an older head, put on to the 1021 spline tooth shaft. But as far as maintenance, there's a gauge in the back on this gearbox right here. Just make sure that when the feeder is in the down position that you've got oil in this sight gauge right there and it takes basically Hytran Ultra Action oil uh, for that gear case right there. And then as we move up the feeder house right here, you got your feeder drive um, gearbox right here. As you can see, when you lower the feeder down, you can see this, these arrows when you're in the down position. So basically you want so that these arrows are parallel, basically horizontal to the ground, and then check the sight glass, glass there. That takes, again, takes high tran, uh, ultra action oil right there. There is a grease circ here in the, in the feeder drive sprocket. So you have your, your rock trap, and then you've got your feeder drive sprocket right here. Both of them take, have a grease circ, and that's for the drive splines coming from this gear case. And that is a 100 hour grease circ. And so there's gonna be a grease circ uh, on that drive for the rock trap, and as well as the feeder drive sprocket. What you do to get to it is take this cover off. This is the best way to do it. Take this cover off, there's these many bolts. Um, again, every 100 hours, take this cover off, and then you can reach in there and you can see the grease circ on that drive, feeder drive sprocket and the rock trap. 100 hour grease circ, give it about 10 pumps. And uh, grease it very, very, be very generous when you're greasing that spline area. And again, that's been changed over, and we'll talk about that in a moment, what that changes are. But this is, the, as far as maintenance goes, this is all there's to. As you can see, it's a very clean looking feeder house. This is it for drive. Obviously, this is our drive shaft all the way up to our CVT. 
on the top there that drives our feeder house and this is all there's to it there's no belts to be checked in here okay so if you look here you know this combine is a very simple combine if you look at the drives we use a cvt drive for the feeder which is this guy right here this is part of the cvt and there's another one of these on the inside of the pto gearbox that controls the rotor so those are your cvt drives there's no belts to be worried about or looking at um, it's all cvt drive which has been around since 2003 and a very very reliable system as far as maintenance goes if we look here on this decal obviously you don't see very many there's not a lot of research here um, so the minimum one here there's a couple of hundred hour zerks and that's here at the pillow block bearings there's a hundred hour, hundred hour zerks and that's there at the pivot point uh, there's there's also uh, one up here at the drive line there's one back there and then there's another one right here at this pillow block bearing and and that's it for your drive line now as far as the chopper this guy right here this is a hundred hour greaser and you can see it the zerk right here that's going to be a hundred hour zerk and give that two or three pumps we don't want to be greasing that more than two or three pumps um, stay with that within that hundred hours two or three grease pump because there is a grease seal there that you could blow out um, so this makes sure that guy is greased two to three pumps you have a hundred hours and if you look on this decal 230 240 series 250 series combines it's going to have this 300 hour pointing to what looks like be an idler make uh, just be aware that dirt is not there and if you're looking for it it's not there uh, there's there is another feature out there that needs it on a different on a different model but uh, north american units do not have that so um as far as any other maintenance, of course, you got your drive logs right here. That's a hundred dollar one. The other hundred dollar one is your rear axle. So that is, as far as maintenance goes, that's all really all to look at. If you look at the number of belts and chains, there's two belts because this one has the dual cross auger shutoff. There's two belts up there on top. You can see. And then you got your two unloader chains right here. Look at look at the sprockets. Uh, there's the shear bolts. Your shear bolts are right here. I'll see right there and right here. And if you come down here, there is a your cleaning system drive belt. Now there's no zerks there for the cleaning system other than the idler arm for that belt, and that's behind that shield right where that spring goes. And then also these two chopper belts as well. So as you can see, there is only five belts on this side of the combine that drives. So these, these right here obviously drive the choppers and that's all there's to it. Now, if I want to switch speeds, right here is where you do it. You go from high to low, you squeeze this plate together and slide it over. So just like that, squeeze the plate and slide it over like that and if I want to put it back put it in high speed that's now in high speed right now so the small pulley is high the big pulley is going to be your low speed all right so I'm going to switch between corn and beans or vice versa and I want to change my speeds actually it's a very simple system on here uh, the first thing you do right down here on this handle right here you've got your one two three this is just your rotor gear box so the first gear is where I would run corn. Number two, second gear is for soybeans, and third gear would be for small grains or wheat. This handle up here is your chopper. Say you call it the stationary knife underneath the chopper. And this guy right here, if you have it in the up position, is going to be disengaged. So if I was running corn or uh, drop and straw to bale, to bale uh, I would have it in this position. Now, if I'm in soybeans, I would pull out and rate and push it down and you want to get it down all the way so that it's in the utmost position and now the knives are dis are actually engaged and that will chop up the straw and that is 
that is how we, uh, that is what we need to do to switch from corn to beans. All right, so now we're gonna go through and we just switched everything outside the combine to go from soybeans to corn. And so what we wanna do is set our settings for our rotor speed, which is gonna be this button right here. And then right here, we got our concave, so we'll set our concave to the corn setting. We got our fan speed right here, we can set that. And then we've got our, our pre sieve since this is a 250 series with the adjustable pre sieve from the cab. We can do this right here. And then our top sieve and our bottom sieve. And then we have to come down here and this adjust our rotor, or our, sorry, our, our residue spreaders. And this will adjust our speed. Since this has the twin disc, horizontal disc option, just have one button. If you had the vertical spreaders, you'll have. Uh, buttons here for your left and right spreader divider, um, also your, your spread as well as your spreader speed, and then your fore aft on your center divider as well. So that's what these buttons would be for if you had the vertical spreader, uh, standard spreader. And that is what you have to do for setting up and changing the speeds to go from soybeans to corn. Now you can also use your ACS. Now your ACS is found right here on the main screen. You would push that button right there and it will bring you to this page. And now you can change whether you're doing, you know, if you're going from corn to soybeans or vice versa. So if you're switching to corn, select corn. You gotta make sure that you have a work condition. I just put an A for reference. You put that in there, you can name it whatever you want. If you want to put wet corn, that's fine. Or dry corn condition and if you have or soybeans if you want to change it to soybeans you can do uh, soybeans there but just give the work condition a name for that condition obviously the word states what it means so if i'm going to do wet corn and uh, i'm going to come down here and you see the fan speed okay i'm going to set it at i'm going to change this to 1050 i just push that button like i just did change it to 1050 or I could push this black box like that, which obviously it changes it as well, besides the arrows as well, or you can fine tune with the arrows. Push enter. And upper sieve, okay, I'm gonna set it at, right now um, it shows 12, I'm just gonna make, and it's actually at 17, that's why you see the red. Um, if it shows red right here, it's because it has not been saved. This is our save button right there. And when we push that, then it will save it to our settings that we want. So you can set your upper sieve, you can set your lower sieve. Let's do that real quick here. I'll set my upper sieve. Um, the limit there, I'll put it to 17 like we have it. And then my lower sieve, I'm gonna open that up to a little more. So I'm gonna open it up to 19. That's kind of where, where, where I like to run. And then my pre sieve, I'm going to set that at 3 8 or 10 millimeters. Everything we do is in millimeters. So I'm going to go right here. Okay. And there I set it. I'm going to make sure my X is there. That's going to verify that, yes, it's going to go to 10. So you got to make sure you have the X's there. Rotor speed for corn, I'm going to start at 380. So I'm going to push the black like I just did and push enter my concave I'm gonna start at 25 that's about the thickness of a cob and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it at 25 right there because it was already set and my spreader speed is 370 I'm gonna set at 400 for corn that's gonna be a good setting I'm gonna make sure I got an X there and I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that these these numbers and I just push the save button right there. You see everything turn to green. Now every time I switch to this condition, let's let's get that name and put wet corn in there. We might as well do that. Let's go to wet corn. Okay. And so now every time 
I go and switch to wet corn. I'm going to have all these settings, and these are going to be my initial start points. If I'm in soybeans, obviously I can do the exact same, just in the soybean mode right there. So now we're going to do, we're in a 250 series combine, which we call this the flagship series combine. So this would be a 230, 240, 250 series that this would apply, but we are going to do our auto header height calibration. If your auto header height is not working correctly, or it just needs to be fine-tuned, uh, it's a good idea to do this. Or if you're swapping heads between corn and beans, it's a good idea to do that. So then I would go into calibration, and then select that box right there, calibrations, and then I'm going to do header, since we're doing the header. Okay, it tells you to set the front face plate to the harvesting position, which is, this, this combine has the feeder face plate adjust from the cab option. And you hit the engine uh, running and header level to the ground. As you follow the directions here, make sure nobody's around and hit OK. Now what we're going to do is do exactly what it says here, pulse the header down button, continue. So I'm going to hit it down. And now you'll see the header go down. Header up switch. Now we're going to do the header down switch. Header up switch. Header calibration completed, and that is what is needed to do a header calibration, whether it's a corn head or a draper head. All right, we're here on the 250 series combine, it's a 9250, and I'm going to give you a brief overview of how to begin the automation and where should my sensitivities be, how sensitive I want the system to be, and we'll run through the generals on that. So just to begin here, um, to start off, our automation button to activate the automation is done right up here. So what I do is I press it once, just like that, and I come down here and you see the letter A. So as long as I see the letter A, it's in automation mode and it is live, it is working. And if I had it, if I didn't know, if I had it off, I would have a one there. So that means you're in manual mode. So if I come back up here and I push the automation, it's going to be in automation mode right now. So to start off, I recommend going out and harvesting at least four to five minutes and get the machine just to stabilize. It depends upon your crop condition, if you got a lot of variable or if you're pretty consistent, um, but just let it get in the crop and get it, get it to go in four to five minutes. All right, on the 250 series harvest command feature, you wanna make sure that the uh, settings for the automation are correct. And to do that, you go on the automation icon right there. And then under the basic tab, each one of these tabs, you got information and settings for the automation. So basic, you've got your crop type. So set up your crop type, whether it's corn or beans, in this case, it, we've got to set the soybeans. Strategy, we've got four different strategies we can use. We can use the best grain quality, which means that priority is grain quality. If we've set it to that, the system will make grain quality uh, priority. But it also is looking at sieve loss too and rotor loss, so it, it is tying that in too as well, but quality is the priority. If you select performance mode, that is going to be based off of uh, adjusting the combine to achieve the best results with the lowest loss levels. So low rotor loss, low sieve loss, it's looking at those and that is priority. Maximum throughput is if you the rain's coming 
and we want to just let the machine go and let it go to 100% power and not have to have the losses be priority, you can set it to max throughput. Fixed throughput is if you want to set the machine at a certain throughput. So in corn, let's say I want to set it to 4,000 bushel an hour. You can set it to that rate based off the yield and the ground speed. So let's say I'm traveling at 4 mile an hour and I want to achieve a certain throughput because I've got only so many trucks that I have uh, available. So I can set it for that speed and it will maintain that throughput at, like I said, 4,000 bushel an hour or whatever throughput you would like. So that is what, is what fixed throughput is. So those are the different strategies and that's you need to pick one. Typically I would set it at performance mode to start with. My target max ground speed is typically if I think I can go four mile an hour in the field I usually set it a mile to a mile and a half faster than what my typical ground speed would be. And my target max engine load uh, this is where I can set my my percent load so that the engine does not uh, lug down too much where I may run into a possibility of slugging the rotor so I typically will set this actually will give this 105 percent just to give it a little bit of a cushion but once you're running at hundred percent power you've reached the maximum uh, efficiency of the combine that is where you want to maintain right at 100 percent engine power that is under the basic so these each one of these under the basic and each one of these blue icons has the information for that section so if i select this one here it's going to talk about what the target max ground speed and gives a description of what it is and each each box has that. If I go to the advanced tab, again, has each one of those icons has that there. My This section right here for initial settings is automatic, or the other option is current setup. If I have it set to current setup, it will the automation will use your current settings. So if I have corn set up, I can set it so that if I'm at 380 ro uh, rotor speed, it will use 380 rotor speed from that as a as a start point with current setup. If I have automatic, now it's going to basically adjust the settings to wherever it thinks right out of the gate. It'll whatever you're letting the system adjust the settings right from the gate. Adjust frequency is you have low, medium, and high. That is how often the settings will be adjusted. So low, obviously it's not going to adjust as often. The medium, that's where I would start out at with medium. That's a medium of the range. If you've got a, a pretty generic crop condition, um, then I would set it at medium and it's going to adjust uh, not too slow, but not too fast. Um, if you have it set at high, and in this condition, if you have a lot of variability in the field, a lot of ups and downs and yield and, and uh, crop load, then I would set this to high. And it's gonna adjust a, little, a lot more frequent, a lot more often, because the variability in the crop. Threshing condition is if if the condition obviously is hard thresh, so if you have a hard time getting the kernels off the cob, then you may want to select hard. What that's going to do is put the cage veins in the slow or the up and down position and it'll slow the crop speed up to get more time to thresh out. Usually I will set it in the start out with the easy condition first. And this will probably adjust the veins either in the fast position or the medium position, um, which can be read in the back. I'll back up one screen and go to the run screen. And right here is where I can tell my position of the cage veins. And by adjusting my cage veins, which is this button right here on the 250 series combine, if I hit the plus, it's going to start increasing the vein angle, which means that it's going to put in the fast position. If I haven't hit the minus button, it's going to slow the veins up to the point where you can have them slowed all the way up to, to uh, slow position, which means that the veins will be at the least angle in the up and down position. So when I 
if I go back to my automation and go back to advanced, my threshing condition, when I change that, it's actually changing my cage veins. And my reset automation, if I have to reset these settings back to factory default, then I just hit reset and I'll go back to the de default. My sensitivity, again, we went through that, showing that sensitivity numbers. If you manually have to change the numbers, if you feel like you need to be more sensitive and the system is not changing it, then you, you can adjust it here. Headland mode. If you want to adjust the fan speed at the headlands to drop the fan speed, you can adjust it right here, as well as your upper and lower and pre sieve You can do that too. If you need to change your your sieves so that you um, are not putting so much, if at the end when the machine is cleaning out, you may want to uh, to close the sieves down a little bit, and just in case you reduce the amount of cob that may fall through when the machine is empty and out. And under the status one here, this is for the automation when for each one of the sensors if there is a problem with the sensor you will get a red X as long as there's green checks there then everything is is a okay and it's good to go now if I scroll over here to the ranges now from out here 20 software we can change the range for each of the fan, pre sieve, upper, and lower sieve. So if we want the automation to work in a certain range, so on the fan speed, let's say, if we want the fan to only be between 950 and 1050, we can set that by just pushing that, and then we can select a minimum and a maximum right there. Same way with our pre sieve. If we want our pre sieve to be uh, between 6 and 10, we can set that here, or 10 and 12. If we just wanted to do that, then we just we select uh, 10 and or 12, or right here in this case it's 6 and 12. Um, we just hit OK, and then now the automation will only work in that certain range, and that's under the ranges tab. We go with each of the sieves, as well as the rotor speed and the rotor vane range, or your cage veins. If we keep scrolling over here, we go to the info page. And there is kind of right out of the ops manual. There's your basic settings for this condition. In this case, we, we selected soybeans, and there are our general uh, settings for the machine are at. All right, we're here in a 250 series combine, and I want to gauge my feed rate, or in other words, it's called cruise control. But the feed rate option sets your speed right here, and that's what this button is here. And if I press and hold it for two seconds. It's going to have a come up here and it's, a, it's going to record the set point, the ground speed. And once it does that, then it will maintain that speed that we are in. And if I want to change that set point, I hit the shift button here on the very front of the handle and I push that in and I hit the minus to decrease my ground speed or I hit the plus to increase my speed. So this is the 250 series combine which has the feeder face fore aft option which we can do from the cab. And as you can see, um, when I activate it there will be a box that comes up and it shows what position it is in. Now how to activate it is I use the push button, we call it the shift button on the very front of the handle right here. We push that button in and then we use our reel fore aft to move the header back forward and as I do that on the display there's a number system there that we can use kind of a reference number and what we're after here is when we have the head in the cutting position in the cut height that I want I want to make sure that my deck plate angle is going to be 23 degrees right on the deck plate. It should be near 23 degrees. And I will set that using my real four aft wherever that may need, me, may need to be. So this 250 series combine has the two pivoting spout option. And if we want to change the start point when we unload, we want to make sure that that unload spout is pointing at a 
down at a certain angle, we can change that. If we go to toolbox and then we scroll over here to the unload, right now it's at 57. If I wanted to change that at, let's go to 82 and I hit enter. So when I engage my unloads, my unloader and I push that button, you'll watch the unload spout go at a certain angle now. It kicks it, it kicks it further out. If I decrease this number, on um, if I go from 82 to let's say 20, I hit enter. Now if you watch the spell, it will go down further. And that is how you change the starting point for the pivoting spout. Let's say I want to change the angle or the throw of the pivoting spout. So I can do that with the shift button here in the front of the handle. This guy right here, push that in. And then what I do is I hit the unload, unload or swing out right here, these two buttons right here. So if I want that spout to push more down, then I kick the unloader in button while holding the shift button. And if I want that spout to kick the grain out further, I hit the unloader out button, which is that button right there. And you can see now that it's going out. We want to talk about the high and low range on the transmission. It's a two speed transmission, which you've got a first gear, which I call it field mode. And then you've got second gear, which is road mode. Now, if I want to come over here and vary the speed, or let's say in that first gear, I only want to run on the eight mile an hour, then I can change that. Now within each gear, you have a high speed and a low speed, and that's what this button here is. You have a high and you have a low. So within the first gear, you've got a low and a high, just by pressing that. So right now I'm in the high. So if I push the hydro lever all the way forward, the fastest I'll go is right around nine and a half miles per hour. Now if I want to change that, I just push that button and I can change that to 7.6 or whatever I want. And on the low range, so if I'm on the low range, I push low and I come over here and I push that. And that is at the range of 5.3. And I want to change that, I just hit the arrow to 5.8. So now when I push the lever all the way forward, when I'm on the low side, it's going to go 5.3 miles per hour. Okay, we're going to talk about the two speed power guide axle on the 250 series combine question you get sometimes is whether you run on the high side or low side and if I push this is the power guide axle two speed with the button with the light on the upper top side is going to be high speed if I push it again it's going to be in the low side or if I push the bottom of the button it shuts it off and no you no longer have power guide axle now whether I should run in the high side or low side Typically, what we'll do, we'll usually run on the high side, and the reason is because you'll get more tractive effort using the high side, which means gives you more torque on the high end when you're going through a condition such as a muddy condition. So typically, we'll usually run on the high side. On the low side, obviously, you may not, you will not have as much torque as you would on the high side. So typically, we'll run it on the high side. Okay, on the flagship series combines, you can turn your distance lights on, which are the lights by the mirrors. We call them, otherwise we call them the side lights. And if we want to turn those on, we use the blinker switch. What we do is we flick it forward like that to turn it on, and to turn it off, we flick it back and forth again, same way. And that's what turns them on and off for the side lights on the sides of the mirrors on flagship series 230, 240, and 250 series combines. All right. All right, now we're gonna talk a little bit on the threshing and talk about some of the rotors, things, setups. How should we set, have it set up for high moisture corn or good yielding corn, um, some soybean setups. So we'll talk about that here. 
So on this particular combine, this is a 9250, and you can see it's equipped with the round bar concaves. And we've got we've got two here in the front, one right there, one right here, and then of course as you move back towards the rotor, we've got the we call these the large skip wires. You see, there's no wire right here, we, there's, so it skips wire, and then we as well as one in the back one. So these are the great section. We've got the large skips. And right here, we've got the round bar concaves. Now, an alternative to these guys right here, we also have the large wires, which basically look very similar to this, except if there's a wire that runs in between these two wires right here, so it's spaced a little bit closer. And some of the, some folks will run large wires in here, which is fine. Um, however, if you get into a high moisture condition or there's a lot of green leaf, um, these round bar setup right here will pick a lot cleaner they won't they'll have less of a possibility of plugging with leaves and that can happen in those kind of conditions where it's green so that's that's where these round bars and from experience and what we've seen over the last number of years you know these round bars concaves do work very well in both dry corn and wet corn conditions so that is, and, and also there are a number of folks who use these, this setup in soybeans as well. And that is something that, uh, that I recommend. You know, obviously if you look at the round bar concave, there's not much of an edge. There's hardly any edge at all. And you can see it's a round bar. It's actually 5 8 stock round bar. They're spaced between each bar about 16 millimeters. And uh, point being is there's they have uh, there's very little chance for kernel damage to happen. So, you know I'm a big fan of these these concaves where uh, simply because they have greater throughput, uh, broader range of threshing conditions, and they do a good job. Especially if you're doing seed beans, I've had a number of folks doing using these concaves for seed beans as well. So. So this is what we have for setup for concaves. And again, this is what I recommend for corn as well as soybean conditions. Now, one disadvantage of with these round bar concaves is that obviously there's a little more open area than the large wire concaves. So that's allowing more stuff, more material to fall through. And if you get into, if you use them for soybeans and you get some green potted uh, conditions where it's harder to thresh, you may have to put a large wire back into the concave section. And how would I, how would I have these concaves set up? Um, what I would do for soybean condition and you didn't really want to change out between corn and beans, then I would write, what I would do is put a round bar right here, round bar number two. So you got one position, two position, round bars there on the left side and on the right side I would put a large wire concave and then a round bar like this one in the number two position so that's how I would typically start out with in, in both corn and soybeans as well and they do both do a good job now like I said a moment ago if you do get into a green potted where a harder threshing condition of getting those pods knocked out you may have to put a large wire back into this position right here. So that would be the number two left side uh, position. So that's how I would uh, have a setup if you get into that condition. The other, one of the other disadvantages of having the round bars, there are some conditions that I have seen if you get into a really rubbery cob or a smaller cob, um, it, because these aren't as aggressive, you can have a tendency to leave kernels on the cob. And that point, you know, obviously close up the concaves to run a little bit tighter and that to help rub the help get a little more grain on grain threshing to knock that kernel off the cob um, again if you can't do it then you may have to put a large wire back into that place so that is the concave setup for corn and beans now one thing to check if I have to make sure that my if I'm having trouble with getting the corn knocked off the cob or have a lot of green pods Make sure that the concaves are level and square with the rotor. Meaning the concave where it comes into contact with the rasp bar is the same distance on the front as it is on the back. And if it's not, then you have to make the adjustment which is this guy right here. And you have to use that turnbuckle to lower or raise that concave. What I do is 
pull this concave out and then you can see the front part of that rasp bar where it contacts the concave and you can see the distance and make sure over here where the con as you spin the rotor the concave or the rasp bar and see where it contacts and you want to make sure they are both the same. So that's how you level the concaves with the rotor. So to set up for the rotor, you know, how should I have it set up for corn and soybeans? One of the things that we do is making sure that, and especially in high yielding corn, is use this guy right here. This is what we call the straight separator bar right here. And I would have at least four of these on the back half of the rotor. There, so they're placed 180 degrees from each other and they're placed around the rotor. And having at least four of them for both corn and beans is a good setup. In addition to these four, I would also have eight of these spike bars. And you can see here it's got a little bit of a hook or spike right here. And this right here is to help tear through that straw. So if you got a lot of green uh, stem beans and this rasp bar, when it hits it, it helps tear through those straw, through the straw, through the green straw. So it keeps the straw moving in the rotor, keeps the material moving. And uh, I would have eight of these placed around the rotor over the back half of the great section. Again, your ops manual has a good page of where you put these, uh, so you can get a better idea. But this is where I would put. I put four of these straight bars, and then eight spikes of these right here. So that is what I would do, have a good setup. That'd be a good setup for both corn and soybeans. One thing to note is that um, you know I get some questions. You know when should I replace the rasp bar? And right here is a standard rasp bar. And obviously, if you can see that uh, you can't see the writing, which you have the grade of the bolt usually stamped on the head. If you can't see the grade of the bolt, the number on the head of the bolt, then it's time to change out your rasp bar. And if you look at this rasp bar, so this is like a 28 degree rasp bar. As the material, as the rotor spins, the material hits this wedge right here and keeps the material moving through the rotor. And if any, if this area here, this is actually the, the rasp part, if that uh, gets worn down, the material may not move as efficiently throughout the rotor. So that's just something, something to be aware of. And usually, obviously, it's going to be worn more at the front of the rotor than in the back half of the rotor. So pay attention. Uh, your rasp bars at the front of the rotor, see how they look at, see what they look like. So um, talk about cage veins here up on, on top of the rotor here. Obviously, with this 250 series, this one has got the Harvest Command. And uh, this is, you can see the electric motor up there. And actually, it will change, the Harvest Command will change those veins based upon conditions. And I'll actually move the veins here. The number, it's got VS, which is very slow, and S for slow, medium, or fast. So what's that doing? Is that it's changing the vein angle and it controls the crop speed through the rotor. So that is what I was doing. So with the harvest command option, you've got the feature where it automatically adjusts those veins to the, pro, pro, uh, to the conditions that it's in. And so if you're hard of threshing, it'll start slowing those veins up automatically. And for those of you that have the 230 or 240 series combines or even 20 series combines, you know, those from the factory, those veins on top of the cage would be set in the middle position. Now I recommend uh, that those veins be put in the slow position. And meaning that those veins stand more up and down over the cage. There's three bolts per vein and you'll have to loosen those up and put them in the slow position. Now the advantage of that is like for this here I mentioned earlier if we, if we got some good high yielding corn those veins in the slow position will actually help slow down and reduce any sort of rotor loss. Now as the crop goes through the rotor and it gets this far back you know, obviously if there's cur any kernels back here, uh, they're more susceptible to be thrown out the back. So what you want to do is make sure you slow the crop speed up earlier in the rotor and give it time for it to separate out. So when I say slow them up, uh, I would prefer to have all those veins in the slow position. Most importantly have them slow in the front section. In the rear section you can have them in the slow position, but let's say you get into some tough soybeans 
you know, it's it can be all right. Actually, put them in the middle or the fast position over the great section, and there'll be four veins back there. They're not they're not terrible to change, but uh, you can do that when you get into some green stem soybeans, and that'll help your throughput in soybeans if you get to that point. So that's kind of the story on the KH veins right there. All right, on the 250 series combines, and actually all the flagship series combines, we want to talk a little bit on back on the rotor setup here. Obviously, if you can see, this one's got the large wire concave installed in the number one right. And on the number two right, we have a round bar, and in the back, we've got the large skip wires for number three and number four back there. So this is a typical setup, how I would set it up for both corn and soybeans, and this has a good, been a good setup. And the reason we have a large wire here is to help help distribute the distribution coming from the rotor onto the clean system. Since the round bars have a little more open area, uh, we want to hold that crop in there in this number one right as it's coming out of the transition cone so that as the crop spins around the rotor, which is approximately three to four times around the rotor, as it goes around, we will, it'll give you a better distribution when you have a large wire concave. Now some folks will, will run a round bar that number one right if it's a little bit drier corn and uh, it's if it's uh, even even if it's a higher yielding corn we can even run a round bar concave in that number one right and still do a very good job of threshing and separating. So also there's another point here on the rotor if we want to change the pinch point of the concave to the RAS bar, which on a flagship series, if you're standing behind the combine, should be around that six o'clock position. And when I say six o'clock position, that means that the when you close the concaves all the way up tight, the RAS bar should nearly contact the concaves in the six o'clock position at the bottom of the concave. If it's not, or if we have a heavy distribution on the right side after doing a kill stall, and we may have to shift that concave to the pile which in in the flagship series we typically will shift it to the right we may have to do these adjustments right here with this draw bolt and there's another draw bolt behind this bracket and we what we do is we loosen these bolts up here on the sides these bolts right here loosen them up and then we take and loosen these nuts up to draw the concaves uh, left or right. And in the flagship series, we may have to draw that over to the right. But usually from the factory, they're set in the six o'clock position. You usually should not have to adjust that. So here we're talking, we're in a 250 series combine and we're talking a little bit on the sieve settings. Of course, you got your pre-sieve right there in the very front section in there. And then in the back section here, you've got your your main sieve. Um, these are the inch and five eighths corn slat, which is good for both corn and beans. And up front, your pre sieve is your inch and five eighths closed slat. And then on your bottom sieve, you're gonna have an inch and five eighths closed slat as well. And you know, as far as settings go, we want to start out with your pre sieve if you have a 230. 40 series or even 20 series combine, we want to make sure in corn that we set it around the fourth notch from the top. And that is a lever on the right side, we'll show that in a moment. But that lever on the right hand side of the frame is going to adjust your pre sieve. And the fourth notch is typically going to be around that 10 millimeters or 3 eighths of an inch. And that's where I would set it for corn. Uh, your Main sieve, that's going to be in the neighborhood of, of at least 16, depending how the moisture of the corn. Um, your bottom one is going to be fairly open. On the flagship series combine, it's important to run that bottom sieve more open than the top sieve. And the reason being, we want to make sure we get enough airflow from the fan, keep that shaft suspended, and that way it'll do a better job of cleaning. So that is one thing. Just make sure that bottom sieve is typically more open in both corn and soybean condition. 
Usually we'll be running that bottom sieve in the neighborhood of 18 to 20 millimeters on your cab indicators where you'll see that. So the other point here is we want to make sure that your distribution coming from the rotor, which affects your cleaning system, you want to make sure that the level or the, uh, I should say, the, the mat or the mug of material is level across the sieve. And what you want to do, um, if you are having issues with cleaning system loss, then you want to do a kill stall and check and see how level the material is on the sieves. We can't have 20% of the sieves do 80% of the work. So we want to make sure that we have a nice level mat on our sieves and therefore it will give our, our cleaning system a better chance to clean the crop. So that is one thing to make sure. And I'll talk a bit of a moment how we can adjust that that clean or how, how that mat is laying on the sieves by adjustment through our rotor. So here is the handle adjustment for our pre sieve. And where should we adjust that? So for corn, I would make sure that it is the fourth notch from the top. So you see here this bracket's got four notches and you can put it into that fourth notch and generally that's going to be about three-eighths of an inch. What I would recommend doing is going back on the left side of the combine, pull that rotor cover door off and then you can actually see and measure that gap or that distance in that pre-sieve. And generally, uh, I say 10 millimeters and I've got a nice fancy tool here that measures the sieve and this can be through the uh, purchased through the Arnold's stores and uh, generally you see 10 millimeters that's where I would set it so what I like to do is make sure that pre sieve is set at 10 millimeters so then I come back here and set it on the fourth notch if it's not you see this bracket is slotted I loosen these bolts up I adjust this bracket so that this notch is on the fourth no notch that way I know when I'm three-eighths of an inch I'm on the fourth notch so that's for corn. For beans, typically we'll put it back to the third notch. And we'll have a little bit less, you know, right around that eight millimeters is where I would typically set for beans. A lot of cases though, uh, depending on what the yield of the beans is and the moisture, we'll actually leave it on the same corn setting and it'll do a very nice job. One thing to be sure or make sure is that if you are getting grain in the cleaning fan, it's probably because that pre-sieve is set too far open and it's letting too much grain to fall through that pre-sieve. Now you only want about 10% of the grain to fall through that pre-sieve and then let the others, the main sieve, do 90% of the work. So you don't want too much in that pre-sieve, but typically if you've got grain in the fan, it's because uh, this pre-sieve is set too far open. So on the sieves, when we talk about how level the distribution is on the sieves, and typically we are going to be a little bit heavier right on the flagship series combines, we want to make sure that that distribution coming from the rotor on the sieves is level. And sometimes what we'll do to accommodate for that is if we go in the toolbox, we can actually put an offset in the cleaning system. Since the flagship series combines have a self-leveling sieve, we can actually offset that sieve. So I'm going to go to the clean tab and scroll down to the very bottom and here you got zero offset. So that right now we're when we're sitting on level ground it's going to be the sieves are going to be at the zero degree. Now if we want to put a sieve offset we push that button and typically what we'll do is we will start with a 0.7 degrees. And what that does is it tips the cleaning system to the left to help shuffle the heaviness on the right and shuffle the grain the material over to the left so that it gives you a more even distribution on the sieves which will make them run more efficient. All right, just talk a little bit on the sieves. You know, we talked about some of the openings, where should we run at, you know, what's the purpose of having more of an open attitude, like I mentioned earlier. But here's where we set our sieves. Obviously, we can do this, we can do this right here, or we can do this in the cab. 
So obviously the top buttons here, this is on a, on a 250 series combine. Uh, the top buttons control the top sieve and these bottom plus and minus control the bottom sieves. And again, this is able to do this from the uh, cab as well. And it's all electronic, so there's no handles or no, no uh, mechanical levers to adjust. It's just all switches right now. So here on the flagship series combines, uh, of course they are the self-leveling sieves. And you see right here, here's the electric motor that rotates the sieves as well as the fan itself. And based upon the grade, there is a, actually a electronic angle finder mounted underneath the cab that's, that's telling what this electric actuator what to do based on the grade. Now one thing I'll point out is back here where the cleaning system pivots on, there is a roller right there and as you can see this one here is steel uh, some of the 230 series combines and even the 240 series uh, early 240 series have a plastic roller there and sometimes you can get a flat spot on that so if you do that's one thing to inspect make sure that that roller does not have a flat spot because it can limit the amount of travel in that self leveling and you can update this steel roller to an older combine such as a 230 and 240 series combine. So as far as elevator chain adjustment, that's this guy right here. If we need to adjust the, the chain, so the, the paddle chain, that's adjusting this pipe right here. Basically loosen these jam nuts up and then turn the bolt, basically push in that pipe up will tighten the chain or lower it down will loosen the chain and usually I'll take this door down and you can just barely feel you want to make sure that the chain has a just a little bit of a wiggle right here like this one does you can feel just a little bit of a wiggle and that's the right adjustment for the feeder or for the elevator fingering chain um, as far as the tailings goes this is underneath this covers our tailings and there's three impellers up there and this belt drive um, as far as maintenance goes, uh, just make sure the belt, which is this guy right here, is in good shape. And make sure that it's not uh, slipping at all. The pulleys look good and the belt looks in good shape there as well. Alright, what you see here is the standard spreaders. These are called the vertical uh, spreaders. And where the pedals spin vertically and throw the material out. And very, uh, very simple system as far as setting it, how to set it. We have Underneath here, we have a center divider that basically divides the left and right, and this mechanism right here actually adjusts our spread pattern. So if you look here, this is actually the manual uh, version, and by rotating this shaft, it lowers this paddle, or we call it the concave, I guess, right here, and that this guy, by lowering or raising it, will adjust our spread pattern. So if you need to get out to 40 feet, then make sure you raise this concave part up. And that raises it up, therefore it allows the paddle to catch the straw and the chaff and wings it out. So that's both the left and right. And again, th this version comes in uh, automatic too. You can do this from the cab. This is the manual version. And uh, this, this is how you adjust for spread pattern. You can also adjust the fore and aft of this guy right here. So that can be done, there's a handle in the very front of that, this guy right here. And this will adjust this whole center divider back and forth. And what that does, it allows, if you put it forward, it allows more material to be thrown in the center. So that means there's gonna be a little more, you know, more chaff in the center. If you want to, if you're going for distance and you wanna get more of a spread pattern outward, it's best to have the center divider back so basically having this position so that you have less area for material to fall through and it's going to allow material to flow out more so that is that is where that's that is how we do adjustments on this spreader style now one thing on these shoots these guys right here is having these guys out so in soybeans make sure that it's out like that so that you get the full effect of having to be able to spread 40 feet in corn you may not have to obviously you may have to bring it back just a little bit so you obviously if you don't have enough 
you don't have the you don't need the header width. So that's how you can do that. Um, one thing here, we'll show you how to spread how the spreader flips up, which is again a really simple system to flip these levers up right here on each side. And one, I'll back up one point here. Is raising this door up, this straw door here, is if you want to windrow the straw and spread the chaff. So now, by raising this door up, everything coming from the rotor will be thrown through here, and you'll have a nice windrow. Everything coming off the sieves, coming off the chaff, for the chaff will be spread out. So that's one nice feature on this system here is you can windrow the straw and spread the chaff. Now again, now if I'm going to raise this up and I want to get into the sieves, if I'm going to take the sieves out, we flip the latches on each side of these spreader arms and then we basically lift up on it. And now we've now we're able to get into the sieves very easily. So now if we want to lower the spreader assembly, flip that lever out like that. Same way with that one too. And then now you're able to lift, give it tug up a little bit and then push it down on this spreader assembly. And make sure these pegs here are, go through the hole and that secures the spreader assembly. And then bring this straw door back down. Alright, so we're we're here with the 250 series combine and this combine has the horizontal disc spreader package. And this is different, quite a bit different than our vertical spreader package, which has the two spreaders uh, uh, paddles that basically clean out the straw and the chaff out. Whereas this one is the horizontal which basically catches the material and and then throws it out. I like this pick package. It does a really nice job in soybeans as far as the evenness of uh, the pattern that it spreads. But uh, one thing I do like about this is it's a very simple system. You can see there's no dividers here to adjust as our standard spreaders. Um, just it's it's a really overall very clean uh, spreader package. And like I say, it does a very nice job over 40 feet and sometimes even up to 45 feet actually. So it does a really nice job of, sp of spreading. And one thing that we'd like to show you is, you know, how does it, how does it flip out of the way? So in case I need to work on the sieve or get back in there, you know, I can flip these spreaders up, and they flip up just like how our vertical spreaders, our standard spreaders, work. So they do, they function and uh, flip out of the same way as our vertical spreaders. So here I'll, I'll show that. So basically, it's the same mechanism as our standard spreaders flip this latch out and then there's two handles underneath here that you can grab and basically give it a pull and now you can get underneath and into the sieve if you ever need to get into the sieve now if i want to get these spreaders back down very simple just flipping the latches back like that. Give it a little bit of a tug up. And then back down. Now we're ready to go harvest. All right, so this combine, this 9250 is equipped with the tracks which are built in Fargo. And uh, really there's not a lot of maintenance to the track itself. It's a 36 inch wide belt and as you can see on the idlers and the rollers right here we've got clear caps right here and we can actually put clear caps on an older track system that does not have it but it makes it very very nice to see the oil level on the rollers and the idlers as well so as far as tensioning goes on the track itself there is a hydraulic cylinder in the cylinder in in this assembly right here and anytime a hydraulic function on the combine is used like the unloader swing or or any hydraulic function it will tension the track and that's basically that's how it's it tensions and that is pretty much it it's a very simple system 
a very reliable system. It's very similar to our quad track tractor that we that we have. Um, that is pretty much. And as far as maintenance goes, any other maintenance, track alignment, obviously that's done here. No different than what we have on the quad track tractor. These three bolts right there. These three bolts right here. They will make the adjustment as far as track alignment. All right. So new for this year. There is an, a, a track option from the factory, and it is a suspended track. And there's basically two options, a high torque, so if you've got a lot of hills, that's where the high torque option would be available. But um, if you don't have a lot of hills, you can get the high speed track option, which gives will give you 25 miles per hour. And it's an ATI track uh, system is what it is. So it makes the rollers suspended. Uh, it makes it a very comfortable ride. And um, one point to mention, if you do have a flagship series combine that, like this one here that is already set up with tracks um, and you want to put or install the ATI tracks on this track version, uh, right now at this time it can't be done because of some differences in the transmission ratio.